Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Trader Merlin Show. It is your... What, what day are we on? Wednesday? It's Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon. That's right, because CPI numbers come out tomorrow. I lost track of my days. Hope you're all doing well out there. Yeah, I'm going with that 70s look with the unbuttoned shirt. I'll try to keep it a little more professional here. All right, today's show is going to be slightly different than what we have been doing over the, the, the main bulk of this program for the past couple of years. Um, I gave you guys a poll yesterday and said, what would you rather discuss? I had a lot of questions on cryptocurrencies and digital assets. I've also had questions on a couple questions on chat gpt and i thought you know what let me throw that out there if you guys wanted it and overwhelmingly yesterday you guys all said let's look at chat gpt so before we dive into it uh let me explain i know you guys all know this but just for my head to clear this set the stage here i think you'd all agree that over the past 20 years we've entered a phase where we become more reliant on third parties or other technologies and softwares to make our lives easier First one that comes to mind would be something like Amazon. While it's not artificial intelligence, it is something that has made our life easier and much more, uh, I guess, removed a lot of obstacles for me having to drive to the store and deal with idiots in line and just the disgusting things that happen at Walmart. I click a button, I can order everything on Amazon to my front door in a matter of days. That's one use of technology and improving our way of lives. Another one that I think we would all agree on that has changed us significantly is something like Google. And in essence, Google is just one gigantic searchable database. And if you ever have a problem, oh, I have a fever, I've got this weird lump on my arm, uh, you know, how do I learn how to play the cello? You know, you go to YouTube, you go to YouTube, you go to Google, you type it in there, and you usually get some pretty good responses. The problem is that Google and YouTube you have to look for a specific things that you're interested in. It's not going to create something for you that is personalized. So if I want to search for, let's say, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to quiz you guys today. I want you guys to be interacting here as well in a little bit when I, when I ask for input, so make, get your hands ready. But let's say, you know, I'm, I'm, it's my new year's resolution. I really want to start working out and I got to eat right. So, you know, I might want to go out there and say, you know, what's a meal plan for somebody who's, you know, in their 40s and they're, you know, five foot eight and they need to eat 2,000 calories. You're going to have to dig through hundreds of different websites to and, and write down all this information, ultimately craft the plan that you want. I think we're on the path that we're going to get to where artificial intelligence does all that for you, where it will be essentially an assistant where you can literally turn over there and say, hey, um, you know, we already have it with Siri. I shouldn't have said the name because now my phones are going to turn on and start asking me questions. But, you know, you can just go, hey, Siri, put a, an appointment on my calendar for 3 p.m. tomorrow to meet with uh, Tom Barr. And both my phones right now are asking me to. Great, Tom. Now I'm going to have a meeting with you at 3 p.m. tomorrow according to both my phones. Um, you guys can see that the technology there has made our lives easier. And I can ask it questions about... Give me a recipe for how to make tiramisu or, you know, what, what's wrong when a German shepherd licks their paws. All this stuff has become so easy for us to access. So ChatGPT really takes everything that's searchable on the web, combines it down into what people, it's called GPT, which is Generative Pre-Trained Transformer Architecture. <laughs> that's what it stands for. So when we look at this picture here, what we're really going to talk about today is the importance of this technology, while it's in demo right now and you can feel free to use it, I would encourage you guys to check it out, um, you will fall into the rabbit hole. The important part here is make sure that you understand some of the key prompts. And I'll walk you through what some of those are today. But essentially what ChatGPT represents is an assistant. And I understand this is a trading show, so don't worry. I will show you guys how to use ChatGPT to create special things for you and how to implement it into your trading or you may even learn how to um pause i said pause big ed p-a-w-s <laughs> so let, let's get started on what it is and i'm going to show you fingers crossed it doesn't kick me out because it's so bogged down right now it'll blow your mind now as you guys may have seen in the description for today's show i actually wrote it with chat gpt i ran in there and, and here i'll go over and share with you what we're looking at here so you go to chat gpt this is a program that's created by a company called open ai and i actually do believe that i heard that elon musk was a backer of this technology not 100 percent sure but I'll, by the end of this i think you all agree that google is either going to make a big move for him or they're quaking in their boots right now because of it so you go here click on try chat gpt you register and it brings you to a page like this 
So just for fun today, I always write my own introductions, but I go write a paragraph about a podcast talking about ChatGPT. And it instantly wrote out this paragraph. When you guys play with this, I really want you to understand how unbelievably clean this text is. It doesn't sound robotic. It doesn't have mistakes. It feels like it's written by an absolute human being. So um, I asked it, write a paragraph about podcast talking about GPT. So it did that, but it was much more technical. And I said, write a paragraph on what chat GPT is. And it says, chat GPT is a state-of-the-art language generation model developed by OpenAI. It is based on the GPT architecture, which uses deep learning techniques to generate human-like text. The model can be trained on a massive data set, yada, yada, yada. So I literally copied some of that and put that as the description for today's show. I thought that was very interesting. Now, what I also wanted to do, since you guys know part of uh, being a popular show on the internet, is having keywords. You put all the, in your tags, you have to have keywords. Well, I don't know a lot of the tags are associated with artificial intelligence. And I thought, you know what, let's experiment and build this show out using chat GPT. So I could go out and go to Google and type in, give me tags or keywords that are relevant to artificial intelligence, right? Or, or, uh, or script language. Well, what I wrote here, I said, write me 30 words I can use as tags for a podcast about artificial intelligence and trading. And instantly it generated 30 words. But the way that you use these in Google or in YouTube, I can't use a list like this. So I just asked it to put them all in a paragraph separated by commas. And there's the paragraph that I literally cut and pasted and used as my tags today. So right away, I can have it do something very similar. So let's say, for example, you've had your, give me an example of something that a request that your boss would ask you. I want you to say, my boss would ask me to you know, write a paragraph on something or what would a, a normal task that your boss would give you? you? Just go ahead and type it into chat. So Michael says, if you ask it the same question twice, will you get the same answer? Yes. If you say rephrase that. So in this example, I'll, I'll, I'll show you here. But if I ask for, give me a paragraph on how to uh, pick a lock, right? Just simple, pick a lock. It will give me a predefined thing. And then I can say, rephrase that or rewrite that in the style of an old English professor or rewrite that in the style of Ernest, Hem Ernest Hemingway. I mean, now you're like, holy crap, I can now start writing things in a, in a, in a means like Ernest Hemingway. So while I ask, waiting for you guys to write in what your boss may ask you to, you know, write them, whether it's a letter or a request, tell me something your boss would ask you. Let me real quickly show you an example of, of, of what this can do. So let's say... Um, um, let me do it. I'm trying to find a, a good task here. Here we go. So let's say I want to, I, I want to find a meal plan, right? So what I'm going to do is copy something out here and then I'll show you what it looks like. Hopefully you guys can see my screen, but I just had this all prepped for today. And I said, create a seven day meal plan for an adult who needs to consume 2000 calories per day. So I can have it. Let, let's just make it shorter. Cause if I do seven, it could take a while to print it out. Let's do a two day meal plan for an adult who needs to consume 2000 calories per day. And why do you deserve a raise? Okay, great one, Thomasina. Oh, that's going. So now it's going to research this, and, and I want you to watch the, the changes I'm going to make here because right now it's just creating a two-day meal plan for an adult who needs to consume 2,000 calories per day. But I can add in here, and now you guys can see it's typing it, and this is all live. This is not pre-done, so, and, and the system is totally bogged down. But it's going to right away make out my breakfast menu, two boiled eggs, one whole grain toast. Now, what, is it a loaf or a piece, right? Um avocado and, and what's beautiful about this is it's spelling everything out for me and you can and i'll show you here in just a minute you can ask it for the recipes or anything um anything you want to further elaborate on any of these me menus here but as you can see it's it's going to type it all out for me i can export that copy and paste it and put it into a spreadsheet so we're on day two and i've almost got to uh dinner so we'll finish when we get to dinner and now i'm going to make a um I'll, I'll take this to do one step further. And as you guys saw at the very beginning, uh, I put in here a two-day meal plan for an adult who needs to consume 2,000 calories. I could say any amount of time. I could say for an 18-year-old kid, uh, a 90-year-old man, I can change my calories. And I can also add in here who's diabetic, who has gluten issues, and it will print out those recipes. I think that is absolutely phenomenal for somebody um, who who uh you know is looking for nutritional information google does not do this you can't google and say make me a seven day menu what they'll say is hey subscribe to this site and we'll get you the software to make a seven day meal plan or an eight day meal plan right 
right away, I've got a personal assistant that just created my meal plan. Now I can take it one step further here. And you notice here it says, uh, chicken and vegetable stir fry, dinner, chicken and vegetable stir fry. Uh, well, I don't know how to make chicken and vegetable stir fry. So you can say, um, give me, oops, sorry, I have to type this one. I didn't prepare it. Give me, me the recipe for chicken stir fry and the shopping list. Ah, I am typing terribly today. So I, I'm just gonna ask it for that chicken uh, vegetable recipe, chicken and vegetable stir fry, which it just told me to eat on day two of this. But now all of a sudden, it prints out my meal plan. One day it will drive your car for you. Absolutely, Naum, that, that's the future. And not only will it drive your car for you, Naum, it will also communicate with you and you can say, hey, you know what, Make a while we go home, uh, I need to make three stops. And you can say, I need to get gas, I need to get food, I need to pick up my dry cleaning. And you save those locations and your AI will automatically know the order in which to optimize that. That, that to me is phenomenal. So notice here, not only has it printed out the recipe, it's got my shopping list, which I can just go to the store, buy all this stuff, and now it's gonna show me all the cooking directions. To me, this is like mind-blowing, especially for somebody who's you know single and struggling with dietary needs and don't like cooking. This makes it so much unbelievably easier. Now, um, there was a question here, for, or I asked you guys to say, what would your boss ask you to do? Why do you deserve a raise? So Tomasina says, why do you deserve a raise? And by the way, Tomasina, your jersey is on the way. It should be there probably in three or four days. Um, I don't know who you got. I think I got you either Brock Purdy or uh, um, McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey. All right, so how about this? Write a letter. Or write, you can say write a letter, write an article, write a blog post, write a, an email to my boss um, telling him why I deserve a raise. Now you could add in here because I have all these different skill sets. You can add in here, say, hey, could you add it because I did this this year? But right there, it's already saving you. And even if you don't use this, I, I'm, I'm obviously saying uh, it's, a, it's an assistant, but do not copy and paste this. Copy it, rewrite it to fit you, but it, it does so much heavy lifting for you. It's, it's absolutely mind boggling, right? <laughs> Oh, bummer. Well, you're going to get a double jersey, Tomasini. Might want to see if you can cancel your order. So here is, um, you know, a well written I would read it to everybody out there, maybe for the podcast. I'll read the very beginning. Um, it says, Dear Boss, I'm writing to express my desire for a raise. I've been working hard and have made significant contributions to the company over the past several months. Firstly, I have consistently met and exceeded my sales goals, helping the company to achieve its revenue targets. Additionally, and it, this isn't like broken computer AI English right? And at the bottom, it even tells you, please know, this is a fictional email. It is a sample and should tailor. So I think this is absolutely fantastic. Um, so Les says, oh, all right. How about that? What? Uh, I don't know if I can copy this. I'm, I'm driving you guys nuts by typing really poorly today. Let's add this one. And since Les says, what is a good morning trading routine to prepare for futures trading? So let's ask, the, let's ask this and see what we get. I don't know what we're going to get. Having a consistent morning routine can be very helpful in preparing for futures trading. Here's a simple morning routine that you can find use, you may find useful. Check the overnight news and global market development. Review news and market reports to be aware of any major economic events that could impact the market. This includes events such as economic indicators, political developments, and other market moving news. Number two, review economic calendar. Review the upcoming economic calendar for important data releases such as GDP, interest rates, inflation that can impact the market. Number three, Check technical indicators and charts. Review your favorite technical indicators and charts. So I could go on and on and on, but uh, Naum, yeah, totally like how. Totally like how, but uh, I, to me, this is phenomenal, especially for anybody who has tasks where somebody, um, you know, is asking for something that you just, you don't have the boilerplate to and you want to just kind of whip something up real quick. Pretty amazing that it can do that. I, I think that that's cool. You should get a <laughs> Thomasina. Uh, oh. Yeah, I know. Well, Tomasina lost the bet. That's why she has to wear the 49ers jersey because my Niners clobber her Raiders. So that, that's part of it. Um, another one. How about somebody in the chat just give me a name of a book that you really like, a book that you go, man, I got to recommend this book to anybody out there. It's such a good book. Whoever gets it first, I will um, put in another really cool thing. And you'll see part of why I think that this is amazing. But the other part of it is I think that this is actually very, very bad. For example, if I am a high school teacher, Life sucks. 
Life sucks because every one of my students that has access to this, I'll, I'll give you an example here in just a second. Um, so what's a book? I'm waiting for my daughter in both fifth grade. I'm, I'm with you, Tom. I think it's a, there's a book called Fish. I don't know if that's a, if that's a name of a book. And yeah, I, I, I see an outline of the book of, I'll write it in there, but I don't know. I've never heard of that book. I'm thinking like, there we go, Of Mice and Men. Uh, I went of, of Mice and Men. So you guys, he provided me with a book outline of Mice and Men. Of Mice and Men. So it's going to give you, I mean, honestly, for a kid who has to do a book report, this is ridiculous. My book report is done in like 30 seconds. Who moved the cheese? <laughs> it's a good, some good books out there. Um, so he, I, I'm going to let this really quickly go through this just because I, I want to show you something very cool here. And, you know, it's right now giving me a very condensed synopsis of, of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. And you can see you get the death of Lenny. Um, you can ask it to elaborate on any one of these. This is the very quick little bullet point, uh, you know, outline. And you notice up here it says, you know, introduction and the ranch. So I can ask it here when it's finally done, uh, expand on the ranch. And now it's going to go into the book and talk all about the ranch and give me all the different things that it, I need to know that are relevant to the ranch within this book. So it's it's really kind of crazy. And again, I could go through all your books. You guys have read some good ones. The Light Me Carry, War and Peace, Place You May Go. Um, pretty cool. Uh, just showing you the potential there. You can type in things and it will all of a sudden, you know, give you outlines. You can have it give you more depth. Um, you know, another one that may come up is, let's say, for example, I no longer want to work at my company and I'm so angry uh, about maybe a situation that's going on at my company that I want to maybe, I don't know, resign. Well, most of us, if we're leaving a company, you're going to write a res resignation. They're like, I'm, I quit. Screw you. I'm done with this company. Leave it. Well, how about this? Write a resignation letter to my boss who I have worked for for 13, 14 years. So now it's going to very quickly, almost instantly write me out a place for me even to fill in my blanks. I'm writing this letter to inform you that I've decided to resign from my position as blank at your company. This decision was not an easy one to make. I've had the privilege of working with a great team under your leadership for the past 14 years. Okay, great. Uh, Fish starts with a P, not an F. It's P-H-I-S-H -S is the name of the band. So watch this. So here is the, the resignation letter, right? And it's going a little bit long here. So I will just give it another second. And again, I know some of you guys are going, okay, enough, Merlin. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. But notice the tone of this email. I may have some hostility when I'm leaving. So this sounds very nice, you know, was not an easy decision to make. I've had the privilege of working, yada, yada, yada. So let me go out here and say, rewrite it, but with more anger. Oops, I even, I even spelled it wrong. Let's see if it fixes that. Rewrite it, but with more anger. Now, it goes, I'm writing to inform you that I've decided to resign from my position as your company. My time in this company has been long and arduous one and is with great reluctance that I am leaving. For the 14 years, I worked tirelessly to meet and exceed the expectations set forth by your company, by you and the company, yet it seems that my contributions have gone unrecognized. So it slightly made it more hostile. And you can say, make it even more angry. Add in a little bit about, uh, you know, the Christmas party. You know, it, it's, it's phenomenal what this thing can do for being all AI and honestly taking just a couple of minutes. So let's say, for example, um, let me come up with a, a decent one here. Oh, yeah. Um, one other thing that it's good, and actually, you know, you guys know I'm writing my book, and it, this has actually inspired me a lot to r work on things. And while I'm not going to ask it to write the book for me, I'm actually using it as a, a proofreader. I'm using it as an editor. So I've taken a couple of my chapters, put it through here, and said, you know, correct this. You know, I said, um, let's see, I put this in here, which is another cue. I'll, I'll let you guys see this one. I put this one in here, which says, act as a professional spelling and grammar corrector and improver. And I'm going to put a colon. And I will put in a sentence here that really doesn't make much sense. It, it, it makes sense, but it's choppy, right? And here it is. The sentence is, I like to trade stocks. Trading id fun. 
I struggle because I don't have a trading plan, but I want to learn. It's a choppy, broken, poorly written sentence, correct? Well, watch this. It's now going to go through your, as a professional spelling and grammar corrector and improve that sentence. I like to trade stocks. Trading is fun. I struggle because I don't have a trading plan, but I want to learn. And then it rewrites it. I like to trade stocks. Trading is fun. However, I struggle because I don't have a trading plan. Uh, use this however twice. That's bad. However, I'm eager to learn and develop one. All right. How about um, write me, me a one sentence. Oops, I even spelled that wrong. Description of trading. Trading is the act of buying and selling financial instruments such as stocks, bonds, currencies, mo commodities, derivatives with the aim of making a profit from price. That's something that you and I would understand. How about this? Rewrite it for a two-year-old. Now watch the difference. Trading is when people buy things and sell them again to make money. I, I mean... It's really phenomenal. You can instantly tailor. And I could write. I could say write this in the style, like I said, Hemingway or Orwell. You know, you could ask it. Make a list of shrimp. Let's see if I can do this one. And don't worry, we're going to get to how this is used in trading. So I, I just make a list of recipes with shrimp. Now it should make me a list of. Oh, so this is going to give me all the ingredients. But you can say, give me dishes that start that include shrimp. And then if I like one of these, I can say, hey, can you elaborate on making shrimp scampi? Give me the recipe in the shopping list. Unbelievable. Okay, so I've gone on I'm probably a little bit too long on, on the power of this. I, I honestly, I, I fell down the rabbit hole. Um, can I paste a link to it? Yeah, sure. Um, there you go. And be, be careful. You're going to fall into the rabbit hole. Um, if you guys want... Um, Hmm. I'm trying to think of, of something here. I can, there's another really cool thing here. I, I actually spent hours and hours and hours looking at this and I have a little bit of a cheat sheet. Uh, I don't know, Jimmy, if it translates into other languages. That's a great one. Let's see if, let's see, uh, if it does. I have not experimented with that. So let's go. How about this? Um, right. <laughs> this, guys, this is just mind boggling, right? A 100 word blog on, um, the band fish. Now let's see, this is really challenging it. So, ridiculous. Right now it's a private company, Naomi, yes. Um, to me, this is absolutely the future. Like, this is ridiculous. So, again, I can have it real quickly, uh, you know, write me a, you know, a quick little paragraph on fish, right? Now, what I can do is I can take this, any, you can take any article. So let's say your boss sends you a really long article. I'm trying to find, think of a really long article right now. How about I just do this? Let me go out here and go to, uh, let's go to Yahoo, right? And I'm gonna click on, here we go. I don't know what this is. It's probably gonna be a really long one. All right, whatever, I'll just copy this gonna take the pictures we'll see how that works okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that we'll go in here and there's a, a function where if you type in TL semicolon space capital D capital R semicolon it basically will truncate anything that you put in there and give you a summary of it so that whole article if your boss says hey I want you to read this whole article what it will do is it's gonna condense that this long body of text up here right it looks like a good couple pages into a very short little abbreviated thing. So now instead of reading the whole thing, you can very quickly just digest all the bulk of the main information. It has rewritten that entire article into this little piece. Now I'm not gonna read it to you. You guys can see the difference there, but I hate cursing on the show, but holy shit, that is crazy. Especially for anybody who has a lot of work to do. Now, Thomasina says, if it's cutting and pasting from other sources, kids will get caught for plagiarism. Interestingly enough, um, there are plagiarism checkers. So this isn't copying and pasting. It's taking content and recompiling it from the perspective of AI. So there are AI checkers. However, I learned actually there's ways around that, but I won't waste your time there. Can you speak to it or do anything? I think at this point you have to type everything in, John. Um, we'll get there. 
uh, you know, for anybody that I know, Thomasina, you're still studying, right? You're still in school. Man, this is going to help. You could say write a 10,000 word report on the migration patterns of the swallow. And it's going to write a report for you. You go through there and re-edit it. I mean, as a teacher, this is a nightmare. I wish this is... But this is not just for kids or students. No, this is for this is open for everybody. Uh, right now, it's free. I think that what they'll be doing is charging you for it in the future. Um, you know, I'm looking at it as a way to really help shorten some of the tasks that I have on hand. Now, let's get let's go away from all this. I could spend hours, literally hours, showing you really cool things that this does. Um, but I want to show you maybe how it applies to trading. So, what I'd like for you guys to do, if you have a second. Type into chat a trading strategy that you would like to look for. Like, I'm looking for stocks where the 20 period moving average is crossing the 50 period moving average on increasing volume. Well, get, type in your strategy in here, and I will show you uh, how you can use chat GPT to write code for you. I, I don't know how to write code, and I was, a, I was a trade station for a long time, and unfortunately, their program is called Easy Language, which to me is, is really anything but easy. Um, with this program, you can actually go in there and type in, you're going to have to explain what an ORBO trade is, right? Because I, I need to write code for it. So you're going to have to give me the basics of what that code is attempting to achieve. Um, this will give you the basic framework. And, and I've tried it with a, uh, several different pieces of code. Well, that's, you have to explain the strategy, right? So... You can't say, give me the code for a butterfly option strategy. You need variables, right? Doji in a pullback in an uptrend. All right, let's try that one out. That, that could be interesting. I haven't tried that. Uh, which, which platform do you want, GD? Okay, Michael. And which platform do you use, Michael? I'll do GDs and Michaels here. Um, and, th and that's the key is, you know, there's different languages. If I use like Thinkorswim, it's going to be uh, called ThinkScript. If you use um, TradeStation, it's called Easy Language. And I'll, I'll use those two ones for right now. So let's try the first one, which is from DJ. Um, let's go to write um, an Easy Language script, Easy Language code. Which will, uh, let's see, uh, which will identify Oh, nope, 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 control Z. I gotta copy it out of the chat. So bear with me, I know this, doing this stuff live is, identify doji formations in a pullback, in a pullback during an uptrend. Let's see if it does this. This would be ridiculously amazing if it could get, I don't think it will. I apologize, but as an AI model, I'm not able to create codes for specific software. However, I can explain the general concept of identifying Doji formation. Eh. So it wouldn't do it here. Um, I actually had it. I think your moving average one might work, Mike. So let's go. I'm going to copy it out there. And we'll go copy. And let's see. Yeah, in easy language code for or to identify stocks below. All right, let's see if it does that. You're gonna have to finish this whole thing. It's funny because it's actually writing out the whole, it's literally writing out the whole strategy for you, but just not the code. And I was actually looking forward to write the code. Let me see if it does this. Ah, uh, bummer, it's not doing it. I actually, I got it to work the other day. I said, write code in, um, Think script, which will get identify stocks above a 50 day moving average or below a 50 day moving average when the 20 crosses, right? The pivot point indicator for him. Let's see, let's try that one. A whole bunch of different ones in here. And again, a lot of this is still just, I have to play with it and figure out what it can and cannot do. Um, you know, there, there it goes. Here's an example of how you would implement this in easy language. So it's literally gonna write the code for you right now. It gave me an explanation for it, but there is the basics for it. <laughs> I would never know how to write this. I mean, inputs, your 50 period moving average, your RSI is looking at 14. Um, if close is less than moving average and RSI is greater than 70, then next bar, buy next bar at market. So this is writing you a, a, an automated piece of code that will make that trade for you. So it actually did work right there. Uh, let's try this one. Let's see, you wanted um, trading view script, pine script. 
Let's see if I can just do this. Write a pivot point indicator for Pine Script. See if it does that. Oh, you need to do code. Oh, there it is. So uh, I got to say, it's it's not 100 percent, right? I don't know if this is legitimately the way it works, but I can now take this code, I can put it into to uh, Trading View, and I now have your pivot indicator. And, and I might need to make modifications here, but I think you'd all agree that the amount of time and effort that this is going to save me uh, in writing code or maybe even paying someone to write the code for me, could this could be priceless information right here. So there you go. Um, I guess I will leave it at that and, and let you guys just be mind blown. There's so much more that this can do. I mean, so much more. You can ask it, you know, what are the what's the best way to learn how to play the tuba without, you know, going and taking classes? And it will tell you. And you can ask more information. Show me how to do this. Show me how to do that. Um, you know, rewrite things, write code. It, it, it to me, absolutely mind boggling because I would not have been able to write this code. No way in, in hell, I am not a coder. So anyway, that's Chad GPT. Obviously there are some huge pros for this and huge cons, but I think when I look at this, what it tells me is the future will be so automated. And the reason that I have to, you know, I, I wanted to share this with you is some of you, are in professions that I think you can see the writing on the wall that this could take away those jobs, right? I think you'll see a significant amount of job replacement um, in the future. Things like, I mean, code writing may be all completely done with AI. You might not need to have anybody write code for you. Just ask the, you know, the code AI bot and you get it. You know, I don't know. My mind is just kind of run amok with all the different possibilities that this represents. I, I, like I say, I feel horrible for people or for students because if I was a student, I know I'd be cheating. I know I'd be cutting corners. When my, when my teacher, um, how many of you had the, the task in, in school when your teacher would be like, this weekend, I want you to write a report about what you did this weekend and, and what it meant to you. Okay. So I'll go out here and I'll say, right. And she says, I want it to be 300 words, right? A 300 word blog post on the fun I had skateboarding at the skate park in Costa Mesa in the rain, right? Write a 300 word blog post on the fun I had skateboarding at the skate park in Costa Mesa in the rain. So. If my teacher says write that report, well, right now, I, I, I just did my homework, which should have taken me, you know, a half hour, an hour, maybe two hours. And all I got to do is make sure this doesn't have anything that's really wonky and out of line that doesn't make sense or is a lie. And my report's done. I mean, as a parent, you really got to go, no, I want to see you're writing it down. I don't want to see you with this AI program. I mean, it, to me, my childhood would have been way different. And I think part of it is, the challenge I have is I think it's going to make the next generation dumber because they're not going to learn how to find things. They're not going to learn how to research. They're not going to learn how to express themselves. I worry that AI may actually take over how people are expressing themselves because they're just going to say, hey, AI, write something about this and I'll let you decide how emotional I am about it. So kind of creepy. You know, it's very Orwellian. You got kind of Big Brother or AI is watching, but uh, yeah, the guitars rift a whole lot of love. I led Zeppelin. Tab it. Uh, that would. That's an interesting one. Let's see if we can get tab. I don't think it doesn't do graphics. There's no graphics on this, so I don't think you'll get it. Tab lead guitar riff to the whole lot of. I'm sorry, but I'm unable to provide you with the tab. Uh, bummer. But however, I can give you an idea of what the riffs consist of. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Oh, that that's interesting. So, you know, this is where Google and YouTube take a huge leap ahead of this technology, right? because it has visuals, right? I can type in here, um, well, let, let this one finish, but I could type in, you know, give me a recipe for uh, an old fashioned. Okay, it's gonna do that. But if I go to Google, oh, it just shut me out. You can see it says network error, so it just shut down. Let's see if it gets, let's me back in here. Okay, cool, we're back on. We've gone through a lot in this discussion here, so I'm gonna go to the bottom here and I'll ask one more. Oh, yeah, it's done. For some reason, it shut me out. I don't know whether the system crashed or it's bogged down or I did something, but uh, as you can see, not letting me chat. Um, let's see, how, how? 
Okay, how to make an old, old fashioned, right? So it's not gonna give me any pictures. This, this is not good. I, I like pictures, but it's telling me a little bit about it. Now it's telling me the recipe, right? Which is fine. You know, if you're smart, you're gonna know how to make this. This is really simple and easy. Here's why I like this so much better than using something like Google, right? Right away, it's, it's explaining a little bit about it, showing me the ingredients, showing me how to make it, and then a little bit of talk track to it. Well, if I go to Google and I say, how to make an old fashioned, okay, now I've gotta, I gotta go through, this is kind of, uh, you know, you kind of have it right here, but I've got pictures. So I, I don't know, it's tough. I do like the, uh, the picture side of things better, but you know, to each their own. Anyway, I really wanted to make sure you guys got a chance to see this. Um, this would be great when I need to take those lengthy CE exams. Remember, um, if, you, if you are gonna do that, if you are gonna do that, uh, Lisa, I have one epic cheat for you. And I mean, this is this will save your plagiarism on anything that you get. So let's say, for example, um, let me go over here. I will go to chat GBT. Hopefully this is not crash right now. And I'll say, uh, and let's say your report is, I need to write a 100 word essay on, um, on, let's see, what do we want to talk about? Uh, let's see, what's a good thing? To, uh, 100 word essay on uh, global warming. Let's just get people riled up in chat. So if I do it like that, and I were to take this 100 word essay that this chat AI is writing right now and copy and paste it verbatim into my report, most likely this could be seen as plagiarism. And if it's run through plagiarism detectors, there is actually a chat GPT plagiarism detector. So if your teachers are using that, then automatically this is going to get flagged as 100% plagiarism. However, Lisa, here is what you do. Rewrite, rewrite, W-R-I-T-E, that in a non-AI tone. This will rewrite that exact paragraph in a totally different way. And I've run this through the script checkers, the, the, the plagiarism checkers, and it will say it's 100% original. So there you go. If you want to get around the plagiarism piece, get it to write what you want and then say write it in a non-AI tone and now all of a sudden you have something completely unique that's not going to be into those plagiarism traps. I know. I just blew your mind. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Yeah, you want to answer some multiple choice questions? Then this will definitely do it for you. Well, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned it. I hope that you... Because uh, people keep asking and I'm sure some of you before today had no idea exactly what... This was. Uh, I try. I tried getting in ten times this morning, and yeah, uh, Michael, it, it's hit or miss. Right now, I'm in, and I, you saw I got kicked out, but now let me back in. I think they're running. Um, they're trying to upgrade this as quickly as possible. This is free right now, so Chat GPT is free. I'm pretty sure that you will automatically have to pay for this down the road. I mean, I got to look at it as a, as a cost benefit thing, depending on how much it is. I'm going to be paying for this service. This is pretty, um, pretty epic. And yeah, you know, we could do a lot of this stuff on Google. We could do some of this stuff on other sites. But this is, as GD says, it's crazy. It's amazing. And if you have kids, do not let them use this. Let them learn how to write a report about going skateboarding at Costa Mesa Skate Park in the rain manually, not having 10 seconds done uh, and then go out and just do stuff and not learning at all. Unless they want to be a coder, then maybe that's the right way to do it. So anyway. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let's go and look at our markets. That was, How long did we did? Oh, I did 40 minutes on that one. All right, real quick, I'm just gonna run through. Um, I saw a comment that came through earlier and I wanna address this one right now. It's from um, Ari Bellig. It says, how do you feel about the manipulation on Wall Street that happened today, Marlin? First off, it's Merlin like the magician, not Marlin the fish. Uh, I found out how they did it, but is it allowed in terms of regulation? Well, first off, Ari, the markets are manipulated every single day of the week. There is not a day where there's no manipulation going on. These markets are 100% manipulated. It's going to go in the direction of the big people and what their bidding is. All of us here, and I know it sounds somewhat condescending, but all of us here lack the inability to move the market as a whole, right? We can go out there, we can make trades off it, we can buy and sell things, but we're not gonna manipulate that market on a scale that's gonna produce massive results for us. JP Morgan, they absolutely can't. So to say that there was one piece of specific information that manipulated these markets, I disagree. It's just the nature of the beast. Now, 
What is noteworthy, uh, one of our best performers today, 1.72% up for the NASDAQ, you know, we have had a huge four-day rally. I mean, if you go off from peak to trough, or trough to peak, going back to uh, the 6th of January, we're already up 6.7% in four trading sessions. Unbelievable rally in the NASDAQ. Now, a lot of people saying this is a bull trap. Well, you know, if we look back here, I don't know if I necessarily call this a bull trap. I'll take these lines out. Uh, I would I would contend that we are seeing a massively range bound market for the past few months. I'll even uh, it's kind of tricky. Where do we draw it? I think the base is a little bit easier to identify. But you know, you could argue that we're bouncing between ten thousand six forty two and twelve thousand eighty six on the NQs. And right now we're in the middle of that. It would not surprise me to see this you know continue to drift up up to that twelve thousand mark. Now the challenge is tomorrow you have that CPI number. That CPI number comes out showing a significant decline in CPI, then you'll probably see this market rally more. There was a Fed chairman or Fed uh, member today saying, "I think 25 basis points is where we should be raising to at our next meeting." Remember, it was 75. Then it's 50. Right, right now there's a 77 percent chance of a 50 basis point increase at the next FOMC meeting. Well, now you have some members, and I did say this on the program, did I not? That you had some members who are calling for. 25 basis points. And here is the current Fed funds futures chart for February 1st. Uh, oh, it actually went up to 76.7%. Um, but, you know, a week ago, we were at 69%. So it's becoming ever more probable of a 50 basis point increase. And by next week, we may actually start to see the 25 piece pop on here. So, you know, that's, that's anticipating a lower CPI print and maybe even better earnings. I have this weird belief. I think people have been setting the stage for horrible earnings in Q1. I'm kind of thinking that the more that people feel that we're going to have horrible earnings, the better those earnings are going to be. It's like they're they're going in the opposite direction. So I'm building more uh, long positions. I'm kind of uh, not heavy, heavy, but I'm, I've got some bigger positions building uh, on these markets, expecting those financials to come out pretty decent on Friday for the earnings announcement. I could be wrong. It's a big risk I'm taking. I know that, but... Uh, it is what it is. I, I think you're going to start to see actually a, a continuation to the upside here and challenge the top side of that area of consolidation that we had on the NASDAQ here, which again was up 1.72% today. I'll start at the top and work down. 3% for crude oil, still not out of the woods, right? That still has a clear downtrend in place. The only saving grace is the most recent low is higher than the, most, uh, than the low before that. Um, you look at uh, the NASDAQ. You know, we're basically bouncing across those lows and showing still in a downtrend, still in a big descending triangle. But if we can get above this yellow box, then, man, you're going to see some big pop in the NASDAQ, regardless of economic data. Russell, 1.26%. Again, choppy consolidation, right? Maybe rally back up to that 1900 mark and then sell back off. But it's been another four-day great rally there. S&P is showing a similar picture, right? I mentioned that it would not surprise me at all to see that S&P rally up to the downtrending line that we have drawn here, which would put right around 4,000, maybe a little bit higher than that. So about 4,010, maybe 4,015. Um, actually, it's about 4,020. <laughs> Convenient. 420. Uh, 4,020 looks to be like the next touch point where that downtrend line would be and, and maybe that's where it starts to turn but right now things looking rather positive dow 0.77 percent to the upside again overhead supply is going to be its next challenge you had bitcoin which has been slowly traversing up towards the top area of that um top area of that yellow box i drew on there as well which goes back to the high from december 14th you know it's been two weeks of really good movement in bitcoin now, I don't think we're out of the woods yet, but you know, you go from the lows to where we are today, Bitcoin's up 9% in the last seven days. Great. And lastly, gold. Here's your GC. Gold futures looking real good. I Again, I do think we're headed higher. I think we're going to break this overhead high, which we're at right now. Uh, let me delete this one and put move some lines up here. You know, we have smacked our head against this area of supply a couple times, and now it felt like it's eating through today. I think you're going to see it back up here at 2,000 within the next month. Um, you know, that's not that far off, not far fetched there at all. So those are the kind of the big market pieces there. You had your dollar index break, kind of sticking to lows, not breaking them. But this is, you know, part of the catalyst for the equity markets. The dollar's not gaining strength right now. If it does continue down, equity markets are going to continue the upside. Last piece before I bail out of here today, talking about that 10 year, not a lot of uh, major change here with regards to the 10 years, but that yield curve still painting a very ugly inverted picture. That has not been fixed yet. This is the 10 versus the one. Here's the 10 versus the two. And here's your 30 versus the two year as well. So all of them are very, very inverted. How do you get the present um, move function in trading view? Um, I'm not doing a percent. What I do is over here in the drawing tools, 
there's on the left hand side, it's got a little uh, trend line and you can just click on your first point and your second point. And in the settings, I have it displaying the numbers, right? So if I double click on this and go to style, uh, 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 is it still in here? Price range, price range and bar range. I have the price and the bar range. And I think when you do the price range, that does the percentage. So there you go. That's the easy tool for that. Uh, let's see. If it breaks 2,000, gold is up. I agree, Big M. I think it's way off the races. It'd be crazy. Um, Cools a whisker below the 50 proof average on the dealer. I didn't look at that one. I don't usually look at moving averages. But let's do that since you brought it up. Moving average, that's the 20. Um, that's your 50. So yeah, it actually, on the NQ, we just broke above it. Now, again, it's not hard to do. The moving average has been traversing sideways. Not that big of a deal. Uh, it's What I really want to see is the this market for the Nasdaq moving up and I want to see the 50 start to curl up and trend right we haven't seen a trend since you know November uh, of last year on the Nasdaq it's just been basically just sideways what else did I see here um, are the 2023 S&P year-end forecasts in yet for this group yep they're all in they're all in what is my dog crying for uh, let me see if I can bring that up for you I think I had like 40 or 50 people post them in one second let me bring these numbers up for you guys I'll move that over here. So here are our forecasts. <clears throat> mm -mm. So there it is. Um, let's see. It goes from number three. Let me get rid of this top two, I guess. Let me just take those top two out of there. Delete those. Um, and the highest that anybody picked was Mike. Mike LaRusso says 54.50. There you go. Let's go up the top. That's the highest. And the lowest, again, was uh, number... We had 42 people put in for it. Anna D'Souza says... 1574 goodness man that would be pretty bad if we got down to those lows but that's pretty much it i am in here at 3901 i just had to do 3901 because there were two people at 3900 it's like i can't have the same number i'd have eaten by one um merlin do you know some good futures brokers who accept customers outside of the u.s i do not um you tried trade pro futures Trade Pro Futures would probably be where I would go. Uh, I've actually had him on the program in the past. His name is Trey Lazara, the guy that owns it. I know him from way back in the trading floor days. He used to be the tech support on the trading floors uh, and has a future. Did I spell it wrong? I spell it. Did I spell it? Oh, it's L O. Yeah, there you go. You got me on my spelling. Man, you guys are tough. There you go. Mike Lorusso. Oh, no, buono nome italiano. Lorusso, eh? Okay. Um, that's going to do it. I think I'm done. 4, 12, 248. Yeah, we did a decent show today. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about crypto tomorrow. I know we have um, some of you who are deep in the crypto world or interested in it. So let me know uh, if there's specific things you want me to cover. You can email me at tradermerlin at gmail.com, which is on your screen, or um, put them down below the YouTube video. That's probably the better place to do it because it will engage in conversation. And that type of thing apparently helps on your YouTube search engine optimization. So uh, write them down below the YouTube video. Uh, if there's a cryptocurrency project that you want to see, it's probably better if you tell me about it before I do the show, because if it's uh, live during the show, sometimes I don't know all of them and I'll go check them out, but I can't do it live really on the show and, and do analysis there. All right, that's going to do it for today. Hope you like ChatGPT. Hope you learned something. Uh, go out there and play with it. Uh, have your mind blown. And, you know, there's there's so much they can do. There's some actually really good YouTube videos that may help you out there as well. Uh, I should have ChatGPT to get <laughs> get your spelling right. All right, that's going to do it, guys. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a fantastic remainder of your day, and I will see you Thursday. Take care, everybody.